Hi everyone. So today we are going to discuss about the high level process of invoice to payments in the Fusion application. So I am making this video for where the who is going to learning this new course or who is all of who is working on the Fusion financial applications. So this information will may helpful for them to understand complete overview of the accounts payable application process flow. So here I mentioned that let me increase the font size. Yeah. So ideally. We can call this process is PTB cycle as well as where it is starts from the PO to payments, right? So poorly we are discussing about that invoice to payments. When you say invoice, so there are two type of creation of the invoices in the phase and application. One is manual. And second is that import. Import is nothing but as a import invoices from the third party application, or I would I would say legacy application. So there are other way also where we can import invoices by using different applications as well. So we can use FBDA templates, which is again comes from the third party applications where Oracle is supporting for them. One is a BDI template, another one is ADPI spreadsheet. So these are the two different tools can be used to import invoices in the Fusion application. And here I would like to say another terminology called as a inbound. Inbound is the one of the terminology where you can understand is through integration. Integration. So when we import invoices from the third party application via integration, then that would be called as a inbound integration. Then we can use everyday templates to transmit the data from the third party applications via integration to the phase application. So these are the two type of invoices to create in the application. And when you create an invoice, either ways, either manual or import, we have to do validation. So when you do the validation, when you click on validation tab, what the system will does? The system will go in the background. It will validate all the information which we have provided at the invoice header level, line level, and distribution level. All three stages should be, the amount and details should be matched. Otherwise, system will not validate the invoice and throw any error. Always header level, invoice amount, line level, invoice amount, and distribution level, the invoice amount. These three should get matched. Then only it will get validated. That is how the system automatically will do when you click on validation tab and approval. If your customer or your client is using approval for the device application, then we can send it for the approvals. So when you click on approval, what will happen? The system automatically will access to your BBM application to validate or verify what kind of approval we have implemented for the invoice approvals. It will cross check that and accordingly, it will take action to approve the invoices. Let's say example, approval groups. If your client is using approval groups for the payments, then it will go and access to your approval group. Previous, prior to that, it will go and check all the eligible of the invoices for the approval and access to your approval groups, who is supposed to approve the invoices and send a notification to them and get out, get it approved. 
So that's how your uploads should work in the BBM application. So that is invoice process. Once this is completed, in other words, I would say create accounting. Create accounting. So here we can say two types. One is draft and final. The same thing which is there in the EBS world as well as here also we have the same final and a draft. You can run the create accounting for the sub ledger model, which is nothing but as payables, then draft version or the payables uh, in the final version also. So, what is the difference between of them? Draft. When you click on when you run the create accounting in the draft mode, then the entries will get generated, but it will be there in the, the sub ledger account model only. If you keep it as a <clears throat> the final, then it will it will <coughs> Sorry, it will transfer to your GL, and there is another layer will be there, which is post that will be happen. Okay, till here the completely invoice information will talk. Here, just I want to give another information called as a now as installments. Installments. So, what is the installments? So, install means used to call as a supplier outstanding, nothing but as invoices, which we created either manual or import invoices. So here, installments window, when you go and click on action button, there is a task called as a manage installments. If you go and click on manage installments, we can see what are the information available under the installments. Let's say example, payment methods, add invoice details, yeah. uh, and, uh, Terms, right? So all the things will be available at the installment tab. This we can call as nothing but as payment schedules. Payment schedules. So when you go and run the payment schedule tab in the table, so we can see all the information which is lying in the payment, I mean it's the installments. When you run the PPR, the system automatically will go and look at the payment schedule tab. So under that, what are the eligible installments are available? Those things, the system will automatically pick the information to create payment batch for them. So till here, as I mentioned, this invoice information. And now, as I mentioned here, ready for payment for eligible invoice installments. And here, create payments. Again, here we can classify into two different methods. One is single payment and another one is batch payment. Batch payment is nothing but which we can run through the PPR template as a standard things. And here, as I mentioned, when you run the PPR batch, there is another one template, so three different templates. So if the business is using any specific methods, any specific country or locations, and a specific data. If you want to run on daily basis or weekly, twice or thrice, then we can define the PPR templates accordingly, which will be populated all the information uh, which contains of the triple P. And then we can create a one template for that. That is nothing but as a PPR template payment process request. When you run the batch payment, we can choose the payment process request template or we can use the as for your requirement. Once you start, run the PPR batch payment by selecting all the required information, payment through, and uh, the which bank account we are going to make a payment, nothing but as a disbursement bank account, so on forth. And then once the payment process completed, is completely is completed, then the system will automatically generate the payment file. So this payment file will transfer, I mean, it's a transmit to your destination of the bank account. It's a bank, it's example, for example, as a JP Morgan bank. So how this system, or how the fees and application will extract the payment file and transfer or transmit the destination bank account. That is most important point to understand here. 
So let, let's get into application. I will show the sample one, how it will be defined. There is a class called as manage transmission configuration. If you go and click on the, the setup, you can see here protocol configurations and active. Just go and click on active and search it. So these are the configurations which we have earlier, right? If you go and open any one of them, let's say example, let's say this is the one. This is the page which will tell us how we configure. Here you can see destination URL, which is nothing but as a, your bank information. And you can provide the authentication username, password, which will be provided as a private keys from the banks that we need to provide it here. These two fields. And similarly, here you can see type and etc. So on is there. application right so this is all the information what the fields are available here this is different kind of like you know, activities and when you send a payment file format so that will be a little bit different but the, the fields are same almost but here there is one prefix will be there the payment file when you generate a file payment file right we can add prefix with the customer name so that's how we can use it. Let's say example, if you're not there, you can see that uh, any one of them. I think, yeah, it is nothing else here. Nothing else, I think. So this is the registered one which I'm using for it. And let's see anything protocol. So create yeah, here you can see that this is how we can create our own uh, things as well as okay let's say example reason configuration name okay we can provide our uh, ftp server ip address which we receive from the bank and port number and the username and password and the client private file key these all things will come from the your pass admin uh, resources Okay, pass admin resources, which they'll be maintaining from their end. Okay, and here you can see some of the files, send file name. So if you go and click here, mention that vision. So when you say this vision, automatically when you complete the PPR batch payment, the system will generate a payment file, the prefix name as vision underscore so and so file name. Like that, it will come. So it means that system will identify the which file we are sending to the back. Let's go back to our Excel. So this is how we can transmit the file from Fusion application to destination or target system application. And so what will happen after we send? Send the file, send the payment file to target application bank. Then bank will disperse the funds to respect to separate bank account. This is the last step of the activity of the PPR batch. So these many setups are these many tasks to be part of your high level process of invoice to payments. Thanks for watching my video. Please do subscribe and uh, you'll get more information of the other finance models. Thank you.